Knights of Apollo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another siege battle in Total War Rome 2. You can see the Carthaginians are ready to go, but there's actually, uh, there's, well, there's a bit of a civil war going on between the Carthaginian forces. Uh, so they have, you know, obviously there's an attacking force, there's a defending force, and they are uh, using different mercenary armies to uh, gain the advantage in this bloody civil war. So let's start with the attackers here really quick. So they look at this huge look at this this huge line of Siege towers being pushed up together. It's insane. It's gonna be a huge force It's gonna be quite the invasion. So we have Carthage Colchis and then finally we have the barbarian forces uh, the Arverni uh, so yeah, they are going to be ready to go, ready to attack. They all have their siege uh, siege equipment here, the uh, or the artillery. Uh, they have them kind of placed behind the siege towers, protecting them from the early game artillery uh, defensive bombardment. Now on the defending side, of course, obviously we have the Carthaginians. We have Nabatia, which always makes me think of tea. Which you know, Nabatia. I mean, obviously, yeah. Uh, and then we have Lusitani, which I used to pronounce Lusitoni. You know, like ah, Lusitoni. You know, Lusitoni's here. What are you gonna do? You know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're back at it. Um, so guys, don't forget to like, share if you do enjoy these battles. It does uh, mean a lot, and it goes a long way. Also, guys, if you want to become a YouTube member, there's a link down in the video description. Uh, you get some pretty cool perks. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for considering that, and let's jump into the battle and see how this one's gonna play out. Don't forget your snacks and drinks. Because uh, I can already tell this is going to be a very intense fight. Alright guys, here we are on the battlefield. The battle is about to commence. And just imagine the anxiety of being these troops right here. Being the front line as you get ready to scale the walls. Now, you know, with it being Total War, these battles aren't exactly super realistic. Uh, but... Basically what I'm getting at here is that most of these troops you see here will be dead by the end of this video If not all of them unless they run away when they rout and they survive, you know the runaway process You know when they when they try to escape the battle uh, But yeah, they are gonna push up their towers Colchis is going in kind of alone Carthage is a little behind them uh, Arverni has a couple troops actually Arverni is gonna be the first one in in my god Look at this Just like dude like imagine being this guy and being like bro Don't you think this is a little overkill? And then here comes a counter charge by the Iberian swordsmen as they take on the levy freeman so uh, This battle is or this well not this battle, but this settlement this map here is pretty one-dimensional in that the way you defend this there's like there's really not a lot of different ways you can defend this map it's usually straightforward now i have seen some different variations and whatnot on what you can do to you know like things people do a little bit different when it comes to defending the settlement i've seen people like completely retreat from here and then just hold like this area and then eventually falling back and holding this area i've seen players kind of hold here for a good amount of time and then hold this uh, little like this little uh, tier like platform area where there's no escape from it so like the only way up here is this this ramp so once the enemy is closing in, there's no escape for all these troops. And look at this. It looks like they are going to be trying to hold this location. Uh, he's got tons of Lusitani swordsmen. He's got tons of archers. Um, hoplites. We got some Carthaginian Samnite warriors. These guys are insanely good. Insanely good. Uh, so yeah, they are gonna they might potentially put up a really good fight here and these brave souls holding this uh, position m Will probably fight to the bitter end uh, But it's really a matter of how many lives they can take with them our Verney has kind of called off the attack uh, I don't, I'm not sure what he was trying to do there with the I think he sent in like levy I think he was trying to ma maybe like um, caused them to waste a lot of their projectile ammo, which they certainly did. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they got, I don't know. I guess he was just kind of 
testing the waters and seeing what the defense was like. All right, so over here, Carthage is now pushing forward. They've got some uh, Libyan hoplites. Now, uh, just to help you guys, just to, you know, in case you get a little confused, because I usually don't like to do battles that have the same faction on both sides because it can get really confusing. But uh, the attacking Carthaginians have a red border around their flags and the defending have a blue border. Just keep that in mind, um, you know, if you ever get confused on which Carthage is which. Uh, so here comes Nabatea throwing in the Nabatean swordsman. Really trying to put pressure on this attacking force, but the floodgates have opened. And now we have massive, massive amounts of troops scaling the walls. And yeah, this is... This is officially, look at this, this is insane. This is officially the, the start of this battle right here. This is just full, you know, full tilt. Going in, look at this, this is so awesome. All these troops kind of forming up as they go, as they collide with the forces of the, uh, the defenders. And it does seem like it's mostly Nabatea that is holding this initial defense. We do have some Carthaginians in the mix as well. And that artillery is getting dangerously close. Let's see, I'm honestly, I'm kind of surprised. I'm kind of surprised, Here, let me turn on the HUD. I'm kind of surprised that they are wasting ammo going after this wall. Because I don't think it, they need to bring it down. I Look at this, I think, look at, oh my God. It's just like a river flowing in. I don't think they need to um, bring down this wall because they've got plenty of siege towers. If Arverni, yeah, see, just push this up. Maybe he's not going for the wall. Okay, good, there we go. Yeah, that's good, that's a good sign. I think maybe, potentially, the wall is just accidentally getting hit as he's trying to go for these troops back here. I'm curious, how many kills does the artillery have? It has 135, so it's doing a pretty good job. This is definitely a good place to use the artillery, but I don't know, he's still attacking this wall. It's at 75% now. He's gotta be careful, he might he might kill some of his teammates here. I don't know, they're getting kind of close. Ooh, Lusitani also in the mix as well. But it's mostly Nabatea and Carthage holding this initial defense. Now we've got a nice new layer of fresh troops from um, Carthage that is charging in and kind of reinforcing Nabatea. Let's see what he's doing up here. Is he, okay, cool. He's got some archers up on this this uh, this ramp here. He's got the uh, Libyan slingers, which are women, as you can hear. Uh, we got archers over here. Oh, we got more more women over here, just screaming. Look at these these beautiful Iberian women. Am I right, lads? Am I right? But the the flower, the rose in the hair, the sun-kissed skin. All right, so <laughs> anyways, um, but yeah, they are doing some good damage there. Um, and there we go, more, oh, a little Carthage me Carthage, you know? <laughs> I was gonna make a joke here. It's like brother versus brother, you know? Uh, you know, uh, Carthaginian killing a Carthaginian, but now that I think about it, Carthaginians are just a bunch of mercenaries anyways, you know, like it's not necessarily countrymen versus countrymen Ooh, more artillery coming in hard coming in hot the fiery balls of justice are uh, you know hard at work today hard at work Cole kiss um, Getting blasted right now by Javis a pile of dead bodies lie where the fight first began but now Cole kiss uh, continues to push. He's got some axemen leading the way with that beautiful fish scale armor. Oh boy. Ooh, that's spicy. Oh wow, did it actually kill some of these guys? It's really threading the needle there, trying to hit this unit. But yeah, that artillery needs to be careful. Um, they're definitely running out of targets. You know, a lot of friendlies are gonna be in this area now. So I wonder if he's gonna hold fire. I don't know. I, he probably is going to use it all. He's got 172 kills, which is pretty decent. 
Um, with our with artillery, you would like to see a little bit more, but you definitely you got your money's worth with 172. Um, and it looks like they're out of ammo potentially. They are not reloading it, so I wonder if either he told them to hold or he's he's uh, used up all his fiery balls of justice. Justice has been served. Uh, which reminds me, I have jury duty, guys. Ugh, so annoying. I hate jury duty. Uh, anyways, Celtic Warriors. <laughs> Celtic Warriors are um, uh, pushing forward. And the Iberian Swordsman trying to hold them back. So they're going to move up. Um, we have mercenary, uh, mercenary forces of, of Carthage just kind of waiting in reserve. But yeah, we're definitely now seeing a huge push from Arverni, which is a good time to see it. And they're actually flanking around a little bit of these uh, mercenary troops, these mercenary swordsmen of uh, Carthage. Where I'm also seeing a lot of arrows flying in, and that's certainly going to cause some morale issues and breakage of troops. Now Nabatea has their swordsmen trying to hold this front line. More and more arrows coming down and doing some heavy damage to the mercenary Iberian swordsmen. Uh, uh, well, well, geez, what was I even going to say there? I just randomly... Uh, <laughs> I think I was going to say, all right, over here. <laughs> it's You know, honestly, guys, I'm a little rusty when it comes to uh, Total War commentary. Uh, I know it's been a, it's been a long time, right? Um, it's mostly because, well, you know, I, I just wanted to take a little break from it. And I, I played Kingdom Come Deliverance, and now that that's over, I'm I'm kind of ready to get back, get back at it. Oh, oh, is that? Do we got some defensive artillery coming down now, going after the Celtic warriors? Hold on, let's see here. Where is that? Oh, all the way, the long uh, shot here, Kobe, going for it, and yeah, ooh, I think he hit friendlies there, but he is aiming for the Axemen of Colchis. Kill, kill, kill. Where's the, I'm hearing women. Do you guys hear that? Or someone with a really high-pitched voice. Kill, kill, kill. Oh, my God. Do we... Okay. Yeah, you hear that? Is there a female around here? Like a Mulan situation? She's dressed up like a, like a guy to go fight. Go fight in the Great War. Uh, but yeah, it's you know it's looking like the attackers are making. <laughs> it must be a, like a female general or something. Uh, they are making progress, but the defenders are not really letting up here. I'm curious to see what's going to happen here. They definitely need to send up reinforcements to try to break through this initial defense. But it's been it's been really tough. Really tough. I, I do think they are winning. The attackers are winning in this fight so far. Not overall. I just mean like they're going to take control of this area. I think the defenders have also been doing a good job of causing the attackers to bleed. And not necessarily, you know, giving up uh, right away and falling back. Uh, they've done a great job of holding, causing the enemy to bleed. And uh, they probably are going to plan a retreat pretty soon. All right, we got Lusitani swordsmen. Swordswomen. I think that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, she's. they're, they're going to move in. Uh, they get a nice little volley there. That's actually pretty huge. They break one of the Axemen units, it looks like. And now they're kind of charging two units. They're attacking these Axemen, and they're taking on these Celtic warriors. These women are ferocious. Ferocious. All right, and then Arverni has pushed up pretty far with a depleted unit of oh, it, it was 69 for a second, giggity, but they have got they've got 68 men taking on these Iberian slingers. Uh, but let's see what they've got in reserve here, because remember, guys, they they definitely want to hold up here. It looks like I the Iberian. Um, Lusitani soldiers have 
sent in they've like sent in most of their troops i don't really see any but two of them over here they had a good amount up here uh but they still have a nabatean hoplite unit they've got some samnite warriors over here they've got iberian swordsmen and then finally we've got another unit of iberian swordsmen he might leave this unit here and use the arrow towers to try to get as many kills as possible i don't know what that's the great question guys the great question is it better to hold right here or fall back and use the towers you know i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see i say it might be better to just hold right here because you do have an arrow tower here you want to make sure you keep that activated keep it going uh have these guys opened fire at all uh yes well this one has 75 and this one has 96 kills it does appear though that they are holding ammo they're holding fire uh and they're going to probably wait until the you know the enemy kind of groups up and attacks this ramp but yeah they're already on to the this is like the second part of this battle the second phase of this battle the attackers have officially taken a stronghold in this initial uh siege battle and this you know they've broken through the initial defense is what i'm trying to say um but yeah nabatea and i think it's just nabatea yeah just well no carthage is over here but they're defending the two choke points here this is actually pretty good it's pretty good see they're gonna be able to hold these guys for a good amount of time a really really good amount of time because well here we go this could be a problem they're finally expanding their attack and i really do think they should activate these siege towers here they should get on the siege towers and push them up over here and attack these walls why well because the defenders can hold right here and here so easily and on top of that they have a siege tower here and archers that will be able to fire down at any attacking forces going this way so i definitely think the attackers need to spread their forces and try to get behind uh these defensive positions but it does look like They've already broken through over here. The attacking Carthaginians have broken through the Nabataean defense. And now they're going to be able to push up and attack these troops. Um, and we also have a lot of archers opening fire. Colchis has uh, moved up some eastern archers to try to uh, soften up the troops. Yeah, that's a good angle. That's actually a really good angle there. That's going to that's gonna get some good kills. And definitely help out the infantry who's trying to break through here let's see what's going on up here i always find this part of the battle very interesting uh armored desert hoplites ready to hold hold this ramp and i would say that's the only well it's not the only weakness of this area but this is certainly a concern when holding the ramp is that it's so easy for these attackers to set up archers and open fire at the troops holding the ramp. You see, they've got a perfect angle here. For some reason, they're looking this way, but their arrows are flying straight ahead. <laughs> Watch. Okay, now they fixed it. All right. And yeah, that's that's caused them to do a mass retreat. And they are losing troops fast. Their backs are turned to the archers. So they're going to set up a defensive line here. That's a little bit better. This angle is a little bit better because their shields are, you know, in front of them where the arrows are coming from. But the only, my only concern here, no, no, okay, never mind. I was worried that sometimes if you get close to these arrow towers, you'll start capturing them. But here we go, the mass push, and it's mostly our Verni going into the fight. We have some defensive Carthaginian forces ready to reinforce Nabatea. And there we go. Are they going to push this gap here? No, they're going to hold their ground. Mercenary Iberian Swordsman. Let's see. No, they're just going to hold their ground. And they're going to help plug the gap. And they are already breaking some of these troops. Now, meanwhile, that ramp battle is going on. Um, Colchis is... Wow. Colchis is breaking through here my goodness look at these axemen look how fancy they've got like it's like a bronze trim on their uh their shields fantastic 
Oh my goodness. Really good use of these Axemen. Look at that melting the defenders. Now that's creative right there. Yeah, that's This right here is a great example of literally using every potential that you have. You know what I mean? Like, they, he could have just mindlessly charged into these hoplites, but he is keeping a unit back, getting a little bit of an angle shot, and softening up these, these hoplites. So, I'm really impressed with the attackers right here on how they've dealt with this defense. Uh, they seem to be uh, doing a really good job here of breaking through these troops. And again, the defenders were in great positions. They were in great positions here, you know? The, these are solid positions, and the attackers have done a great job of using few troops on breaking through them, taking control of this battlefield, and causing the defenders to kind of slowly push back, fall back, reform, which is a great sight for the attackers. Arverni has been crushed over here. Arverni has fallen. To these troops and I wonder what they're gonna do now there is an option here the, what you could do uh, to deal with the troops up on this uh, this defensive position is just don't attack them just let them sit there because what you can do is just hold the ramp with one unit kind of like what he's doing here the Libyan infantry and let them come down to you because if your army is like pushing up here they, they can't just sit there all game, you know, all battle. Ascent, uh, eventually, they're going to have to push down and, and fight. That is an option. The only issue with that option is that this arrow tower is just going to be blasting and blasting and blasting all battle. And then I started blasting, you know, this, this arrow tower here. <laughs> crazy. Just crazy. All right, Kolka is still fighting Nabatee over here, the Armored Desert Hoplites. And then over on this side, uh, we have Carthage, the attacking Carthaginians, cleaning up a final uh, hoplite, you know, depleted hoplite unit, but they're not done. Look at, they're like, oh, no, our brothers, they need help. Fellow hoplitians. There we go, so he's gonna send up another hoplite unit. He really should try to get this arrow tower back under his control. I mean, these arrow towers can do a lot of damage. That's the thing, you know, like... That's why I like Rome 2's, like... When you compare it to Attila, where the siege towers just, like, break when you control them as the attackers, you know, when you capture them, it's really dumb. Oh, this is genius. Oh, I see what he's doing here. Okay, so he's gonna try to light this on fire. This is actually really good. Our Verde might not even be attacking here. I think all that they're doing... Oh, these are chosen swordsmen. They're getting blasted right now by Javis. But I think what they're doing is just trying to light this on fire. And then they're just gonna run away. And that fixes the, uh, the siege tower issue. I'm really glad he sent up two units as well because one unit's holding. And the other unit's throwing their torches. Which is very... The the funny... Look at this. When they throw the torches, it kind of falls back on them. They're like, oh god, watch out! <laughs> oh, and it... Well, I don't know. Is that lighting them on fire, or was that from the arrow tower? It must have been from the arrow tower. I don't think torches can fall back and light your guys on fire. If they can, that's actually pretty awesome. So I think one more volley here is... Yep, that's it. Whoa. Whoa, some of these are getting some insane, some insane flight here. What the heck? Man, he must have bounced that tower, like that torch off that tower just perfectly. Boom. Like just all the way. Up. It's like, Jesus, man, you don't have to throw it that hard. <laughs> but there you have it, guys. They just, that's exactly what they're doing, guys. It's like they read my mind. Well, I, well, I didn't mention that you can burn down the tower, but I did mention that the tower could be a problem. But they took it out, and now they're just going to be able to hold this ramp without any problems. All these units are going to be kind of useless now. They're going to have to attack. Oof. Oof. That could have been some friendly fire there. That might have been some friendly fire. We've got artillery fire. Is that... Where's that coming from? Uh-oh. Hold on. Hold the phone, guys. 
hold your horses, as they say here in America and maybe other places. We've got Nabataean noble ho calf. We certainly have the Nabataeans not holding their horses. Am I right? Yeah. Anyways, um, so they are um, they're pushing forward and they're looking for an opportunity to get some kills. This Carthaginian artillery, which by the way, I thought this was an Arverni artillery. 45 kills, what? What? Is this a different crew? This must be a different crew. Can you do that? Did the crew bring ammo with them? Like, can you assign your crew to a different artillery piece? I don't know. I've never really tried that. Now, but he is holding back his calf. I think he's a little bit worried, which makes sense. We've got the noble blood calf watching that flank. And this is a general, guys. So he doesn't want to be too reckless. It's important to have your general. It's good for morale. Even on defense. Oh, no. Look at this. Okay. Our Vernie is not going to sit back. They're going to push their troops forward. They got the chosen swordsman trying to clean up these troops. And oh, my God. Big push here. Big push. Lusitani swords women holding back against the Axemen. God, imagine sending your women to war. That's, that's just horrific. Must be uh, desperate times indeed. Uh, now we got the attacking Carthaginians taking control of this gate. And you can see like the defenders have kind of like... As soon as the attackers have broken through here and kind of gained a lot of control of the arrow towers, they were just like, yeah, we're, we're back here. And this is the this is the go-to defense over here. These two choke points here, those are the toughest positions to attack. And I'm sure if you've been watching my channel a long time and you've seen this, uh, this settlement before, you've seen many battles uh, that always take place here. And this, again, it makes sense. It's a good spot. Why? Well, it's only two choke points. Uh, you have this nice high ground where you can fire down arrows uh, to support the infantry holding these choke points. Uh, the attackers should be able to attack here, but it glitches out all the time where you can't get siege towers up here, which is a real shame. You can send troops all the way behind here and attack the flank, uh, but that's tricky. You gotta have some pretty good timing. Pretty good timing. And there we go. Uh, it was a very light defense with Lusitani and their swordswomen. In fact, I saw a lot of the swordsmen, swordswomen retreating back. Uh, so I think they were trying to save as many as possible. They definitely need to send up more troops here, though. This is one unit. I wonder if they're, they're like trying to set up a trap here or something. This is such a weak force. And I'm curious to see... Usually attackers do two things here. Okay, well this just answers my question. I was gonna say, are they gonna sit back and use their archers and try to skirmish down the defenders a little bit before they advance their infantry? Or are they just gonna go full speed in? It looks like they're going full speed in, guys. They are not letting up. And I'm not surprised. I mean, it looks like the defense here is a little, little choppy here. It's a little sloppy. You know, there's some gaps over here. It's just one unit of hoplites. Now, hoplites can hold for a long time, but it's just one unit. I'm surprised he's not... See, what I would do here... Yeah, he's definitely trying to push around the flank, which is good. I would have done something a little bit different. I would have formed a column right here and pushed forward. And we got another unit of hoplites going in. See, this is a good push, though, by Carthage. By doing that, you're extending the defense here. There's a hole in the line. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza. All right? And uh, you got you to gotta cover that hole. And uh, Nabatia did not do a good job there. But that's okay. I don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, he is harassing the archers, which is actually pretty big. But let's see if these guys, they're shaken. They're exhausted. I don't think they're going to last much longer. And they're taking on Nabatia heavy archers. These guys can hold their own in, in melee. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, they sliced them up pretty good. Well, he is running away. But they need to, they need to send something here. But now um, we got Arverni pushing forward. 
Over on this side, um, no push yet from Colchis. We'll see if he commits his men. No, you fool. And uh, where is that Nabataean Cav? That's way over here. Uh, they have 89 kills. If they killed anyone, it was probably just a siege crew, like an artillery crew. I don't think we missed anything too crazy there, but it could be wrong. I don't know. He could have killed some archers or something. I don't think so, though. So, I don't know where he's headed. Oh, I see. They've captured the gate. Or at least they're going to capture the gate. So, they'll probably, like, wait them in the tree line here. They'll take the gate and... The general will be back towards the front line. All right, here we go. So, Colchis moving forward. He's got some axemen. Uh, so, they are going to go ahead and engage this area. We've got veteran shield warriors. This is, like, one of the better units for, um, for uh, Lusitani. And there we go. Lusitani uh, swordswomen pushing forward as well and wow they're already breaking some axemen they're probably gonna have to send up more troops there to deal with this got some archers moving up to try to reinforce i assume and look at this the attacking carthaginians are sending so much this fight and it does seem like nabatea has controlled the situation and is holding back all these troops here you know, before they had that gap in the line, they had a unit in the back line harassing the archers. It's all good now. It's all good now. So I like this. Carthage has left open a pocket here, a little, a little opening. He's using the Samnite Warriors projectiles and trying to kill some of the hoplites from afar. That's really good. That's, that's, I mean, hoplites are tough to kill in close combat. Uh, and it's, it's always smart to try to use as much of your unit as possible before charging them in. You know, if they've got some sort of jabby cap or, you know, skirmish capability, use it. And look, he sent the archers up there to absorb it. Oh, and they just destroyed this wall randomly. They're like, they're like, screw your wall or whatever the hell this was. It was like a fence or something. The guy in the house, he's like, dude, I just built that, bro. Like, come on. You know, the civilian who built it is like taking shelter into this building. Like, come on, bro. Out of all the things you could have destroyed in this settlement, why my fence? So Nabatea, the hoplites are doing their job. This one's down to 38, though. This is a problem. And I think, wow, I think pretty soon the defenders are going to crack here and fall back. In fact, they've already cracked here. That's actually really fast. Most of the time that I've seen these battles, the fight over here is pretty long. And to see that the attackers have already kind of broken through here... It is very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Now we have Lusitani holding the center position, preventing any reinforcements. Oh, nice little jabby throw. Trying to prevent reinforcements from getting behind Nabatea. But I don't think they really need them, honestly. Nabatea is starting to break here. I mean, it's always helpful. It's always useful to get behind the enemy. But it's it doesn't seem like Carthage desperately needs them. And Carthage is over here. What a madman. Carthage has units over here pushing aggressively. Oh, this is a great flanking opportunity. These guys are... Oh, no, 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 no. That was a complete misclick. Get back over here. So this is a great flanking opportunity. Lusitani has pushed in. You can easily turn around and get behind them. You definitely want to do that. I don't think these pikemen are going to go after you. But these uh, veteran shield warriors will only oh, miss their jabby throw. That or it didn't fully go. There we go. Carthage sends up another Libyan infantry unit. 
No, they're sending them back. I guess whatever. I, it's they're probably gonna clean these veteran shield warriors up pretty quickly. They're down to 52 men, but still, I would have I would have committed. Like, nice little jabby throw, but get around here. Kill these guys really. It's so quick. Just kill them really quick. See, these guys are breaking. You could have saved this unit. Let's go back over here where Nabatia has broken, guys. The hoplites have broken, and Carthage and Arverni is pouring in. We got the general over here as well. And no surprise, you are seeing, uh, you're seeing the African pikemen of Carthage. But here's the great question, guys. The biggest question of all. Do they have ammo left over? And the answer is yes. Uh, they are going to need to use these archers to soften up the pikemen. If they want any chance of winning this battle, they got to use their archers to soften up the pikemen. Oh, and here comes the Nabatean general. He's back. Back from doing business. All right, Nabatia pushing up some uh, some armored hoplites in the front here. Makes sense. They're trying. What they're basically trying to do is absorb some of that ammo. You got Javi's coming. In. Great use of Javi's. Look at that. They just dropped this unit. I think they were at like 150. Now they're at 133. Plus, you're gonna have archers coming up. Like, get these archers up here. Start blasting. Start blasting these these pikemen. And there we go. See, he's using... Nice. He's using the Javis. That's actually pretty good. I mean, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think in a situation like this, is it better to use the Javis first than your archers? Or is it, right now, he's using both. He's slicing these pikemen up. But yeah, if you had to pick, do you think it would be better to move up the Javis first? And then use the archers or use the archer ammo first and then save the Javi ammo for a later time. I would say personally, I th I guess it really depends, but I would say use the infantry Javis first because sometimes it's hard to use them. Like how many times have you played and a unit has died with full Javi ammo? I say whenever there's an opportunity to use Javis before archers, do it. Uh, that way you get the fullest potential out of that unit, you know? All right, the pikes are down to 46 men. Looks like uh, Carthage is going to go ahead and charge in. But even at 46 men, they can rack up a lot of kills. They can rack up a lot of kills. There they go. Veteran shield warriors join the pikemen. Very nice job there. And I wonder, like, did the attack, did the attackers bring any pikemen as well? That's also a good counter to enemy pikemen. These pikes are doing much better. They still have 129 men. They might want to send up some archers over here to deal with that. Do the defenders, oh, yeah, the defenders still have ammo as well. And these Nabataean heavy archers are one of the better archer units in the game. This unit, oh, no, no, they still have their ammo. I guess they were just cheering with their swords. Yeah, one way, if you didn't know, one way to tell if a unit is out of ammo, they'll have their swords out. I really like that, you know, like compared to Attila where it just shows you how much ammo they have. I kind of like the fact that you can't see enemy ammo amount and the only way to tell is if they have their swords out. Pretty cool. It, it you know, it doesn't hold your hand in, in the battles. Libyan infantry going in for a charge. Uh, we got Carthaginian mercenary Samnite warriors breaking there a little bit. That's not a good sign uh, or good sight if you're rooting for the attackers. And then the defenders here, this is pretty much it in terms of healthy forces. Like, it, it's all going to come down to mostly Lusitani. Uh, we do have some Carthaginians here. It's the pikemen, some archers. But Nabatia and defensive Carthage is pretty much out of the game. And... There's still a lot of attackers here, guys. A lot of attackers. Oathsworn, archers, uh, another unit of Oathsworn. We got some mercenary uh, uh, Cretan archers. 
It looked like they used up all their ammo, probably going after the pikemen on, on defense. All right, let's see if Lusitani can hold here. The balance of power is is showing that the battle is um, in favor. Oh my God, this guy is a porcupine. Look at this. The battle's in favor of the attackers. Now Nabati and Archer's going in. They have not dealt with this pike unit. This is gonna be a problem. Do they have any sort of ammo? The Eastern Archers look like they still have ammo, but they are taking fire from the Nabataean Archers, which is gonna be a problem. And now we've got the General charging out. Nabataean General going for the kill. He wanted a piece of that action. Uh, I don't know if he, he... He got a couple kills there, but nothing too crazy. It wasn't that devastating of a charge. He was like, oh man, I was watching Lord of the Rings when Theoden charges out with his calf. He's like, I wanted to do that. And then I realized, oh wait. <laughs> oh wait. We're not, we're not doing as much damage. Where's Gandalf? <laughs> The pikemen now down to 69 giggity. What a great number. So they are down, um, yeah, because they're getting shot. So the Eastern archers have returned. And uh, they basically were juking out the Nabataean archers. You know, they were getting shot. They ran away, came back up once the uh, Nabataean archers stopped focusing on them. Uh, oh, okay. I thought they were running out of ammo. Whenever they cheer, they take their daggers out. But the archers are doing some heavy damage. Oh, wait, did they break them? Oh, I think they broke them there. There we go, guys. This is it. This is it. Now we have the Nabateen general trying to slow down this advance. Not a good charge there. And they charge into these axemen. They don't want to get stuck into a fight here. This is a shock cav unit. Oh, no, it's a melee cav. Just kidding. I don't know my units. But still still you don't want this this fight to end like this over here it's looking a little bit better for the defenders they still have control of this this hill and there's not a ton of attackers here that ooh what do we got here oath sworn oath sworn ooh two units of oath sworn this is going to be a problem we got some carthaginian forces here um some archers here but this is going to come down to the wire guys now we got archers moving in, the attacking Carthaginian archers. Uh, oh, wow. Look at this big old fight right here to try to control this upper tier area. And this is a good move by Arverni and Colchis because they want to gain control of these arrow towers. Take them out, secure them so they're not shooting you in the back. And if maybe even have them shoot at the uh, defenders once you take control of it. And now they're trying to take control of this arrow tower. That's huge. At this point of the battle, any kind of edge you can get is going to be worth it. It's going to be so worth it. So you definitely want to gain control of those arrow towers. And this is pretty much it for the attackers on this side. Two units of Oathsworn, one of the units being the General of Arverni. But no, he's going a different way. Looks like he's going to be joining these guys up here. Uh, but we do have the Carthaginian attacking archers. Looks like they're going to help out and join the fight. This is going to be insane, guys. This is going to be so close. Balance of power still in favor of the attackers. So it's still uh, looking like it's in their favor. But you never know. You never know. All you could, if you just get a, a crazy cav charge, you know, that 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 could be all that it takes. Uh, we got a the, the depleted African pikemen with 19 men. They're moving up. They're trying to get, you know, get in the fun, get some action here. They only have 19 kills. So the attackers did a great job of uh, killing those pikemen and not letting them get too many kills. All right, who's going to take this one? Who's going to take it? Who's going to take it? All right, let's see what the defenders have. They got one unit here of Lusitani Nobles. Pretty good unit. Very good unit. Uh, slingers. We've got another unit. Okay, so two really good units. 
They've got their third infantry holding here, and the rest is just archers. Pretty much. So if they could just break through this Lusitani, uh, Lusitani nobles here, they're golden. And it, very smart of them to take the arrow towers. There we go. We got some old sword charging in. This is the general of Arverni. The balance of power looks like it's getting worse and worse for the defenders. Battle of elites. Right here, right now. Chosen swords getting shot at. They need to... They need to take this arrow tower. This is this is definitely this is why the defenders are holding right here. Probably mostly because of the look at that. You see that arrow tower just shoot in all directions? Look at that! That's why this arrow tower is so important. And that's why they're trying to hold it for dear life. But I think it's only a matter of time. These pikemen uh, now have 22 kills. They're racking up some kills a little bit, but they are breaking, so that was short-lived. Nabatia, um, Nabatia is going in for a charge here with the general. Or not, or not. And now we, ooh, we got a little general v. general. We have Colchis's general going into the, the fight. Gotta be careful here. You don't want to lose your general here. And they're, they're kind of just mindlessly charging into these Lusitani nobles. And now we got a counter charge by Nabatia, but they kind of call it off at the end because the general for Colchis was falling back. We had the Arverni general over here as well. Uh, the the Oath Sworn. You just got to send them in. Just send them in. Fight, fight, fight. Get through. Look at this. This is, this is so close. Why retreat? Why retreat? Just keep fighting. They got to take this arrow tower. They got to take the arrow tower. The attackers want to take this one. They got to take it. Attacking Carthage, Arverni. They're close to breaking these Lusitani nobles, but they are nobles. And they they fight steady. Okay, they're, they're not... Well, no, they're steady. Because they're well-disciplined. Well-disciplined troops fighting for dear life. Oh, and the Arverni general has actually switched over to this side. I think that's pretty smart because they definitely need help over here. They're getting hit really hard by um, Lusitani nobles. Got some Lusitani nobles holding over here as well. The archers trying to soften them up from a distance. Good to see that the attackers still have some archers. Very good to see. Eastern archers still uh, got some ammo. Still doing some damage. They desperately need that. Bounce of power is shifting a little bit in favor. It, well, it's still in favor of the attackers, but it's a little bit closer to even. A little closer to even. Oatsworn down to 96. This arrow tower has been a thorn in the side of the attackers, but they are on the they are so close. They're on the verge of capturing it. They just gotta break through this oh man, like where did these guys come from? The mercenary Iberian swordsmen. You might have to just send one unit to just push it. There we go. They're breaking. Gotta get this arrow tower. That should be the I mean, they are trying to take out the general, good for them, but they need to take this arrow tower and have it on their side. They don't have enough troops over here. They're running out of troops. I, Arverni is about to crack here. These troops need to just go in. The general's too weak. Too weak. Charge in. Oh, and then we got defending uh, the defending general's bodyguard of Carthage, and they break. No, they didn't break. Okay. It looks like they were breaking, but look at this flanking maneuver. Oh, very wise, very smart of Colchis trying to contain it, because you never know, Cav can do a lot of damage. And they still have not neutralized this. Neutralize it, guys, please. It's still getting tons of kills. There we go. They finally neutralized it. They just got to capture it all the way. 
Hulk is oh this is huge guys can they take it can the attackers take it the bounce of power is still in favor of the attackers but the defenders do have enough you look at the bounce of power they still have enough here to win it you never know especially when it comes down to so few troops all it takes is a couple troops to break and that bounce of power will completely shift all right lucitani lucid lucitani's general they have held They've taken the arrow tower, which is now on their side. It's, see, already softening up this general. It's time for these guys to push. All right, well, you got to send everyone now. Or even this guy over here. What, get get them in. You, every single guy. Oh, more and more troops from Lusitani's breaking. This is not looking good. Essentially, what we have is two generals... Oh, but Colchis's general's on the verge of breaking, which, you know, whatever. He just has archers, but it, it does add up. And he's going for the Carthaginian general. Let's see if he's got enough gas. He's running on fumes right now. Let's see if he has it in him to, to kill this general's bodyguard, or at the very least weaken them enough to cause them to break. Oh, here comes Arverni to help out. All right, this is it. It's coming down to the Lusitani nobles. Do they have enough? Oh, they're breaking. Oh my God. Massive, massive break. Oh, they just didn't have it in them. They just didn't have it in them. And the Lusitani Nobles, I think this is game. That's a devastating break right there. Oh my God. The Oathsworn, the General Oathsworn. This is all that's left. And I just don't think they have enough. To win the day. It says the combat's even. But the bounce power's in favor of the defenders. And there we go. They are breaking. And that, guys, is going to be the battle right there. There is no way that they are going to win this one. The arrow tower being an issue for the defenders. Uh, so, there you have it, guys. That's going to be the battle. What an epic finish. It just crazy how quickly the tables turn for the attackers. It seemed like they had so many troops left. Uh, but that's just not the case. So we'll go ahead and show you guys the end results. All right, guys. So here we are with the end results. And uh, so this was sent in by, I believe, uh, Scorpion here. Uh, he was the Lusitani player. Yeah, he was the one who sent in the replay. Uh, getting the most kills. Well, I was going to say out of everyone. But no, that's not the case. Um, he got close. He was second place. We actually have Spartacus here who's leading our Verney getting the most kills. But look how close this battle was. I mean, if you look at the kills here, it's insanely close. And look at everyone did a really good job. It was a great fight and uh, just a lot of fun. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's battle. Thank you again uh, for hanging out. Again, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good jazz. And if you want to become a YouTube member, you can by using the link down below. And also, guys, uh, this was sent in through my Discord. So make sure you join my Discord. You can share uh, your epic battles. You can send them to the admins, and the admins will upload them for everyone to download and watch. So a uh, big thank you to everyone uh, for watching, all the players. This was a lot of fun. And I'll see you guys next time on the battlefield. <laughs>